What is going on, Governor? It's G-School here, and today we're going to update the legendary tier list that we created in a prior video and live stream with Genghis Khan. If you like videos where we evaluate legendary, epic, heck, every commander they've got, and compare them, you should definitely like and subscribe, because that's a thing we do here, and we are a sponsored creator with Rise of Kingdoms. Now, you may recall in a prior episode, we created a legendary tier list. Card will be up in the top to help you get a look at it and evaluate all the different legendary commanders and which one you might go invest in next. But we need to update that list for Genghis Khan. I'm going to put the list up on the screen over here. You can see what that looks like. And we're going to put Khan onto the list. Now, there's a couple things we need to talk about. First is how this rating system works. We've rated the commanders all the way from S tier, which is like supremely excellent, the very best, use them for this activity, all the way down to DNF at the very bottom, which is freaking don't use this commander for this activity. We evaluate the commanders across a bunch of different activities. Those include defending your city, barbarians and barbarian forts, the open field, rallying cities, rallying objectives, and defending objectives. Um, and we give an overall rating, although the emphasis should be on what commander do you want for the task at hand. Pick one of those categories and focus more on that and where the commander falls in that ranking than the overall ranking. So, all of that said, let's get a look at Genghis Khan. And what is so interesting about Khan is that so many of his skills care profoundly about whether or not you have cavalry in the army. This means that he's really good for certain situations and not particularly versatile as a commander. The other thing that makes this commander really interesting is that they've got four skills that are relevant most of the time, uh, but the last two skills, in particular, Nomadic Empire is relevant when you have 70% strength of your army or higher, and Military Lifestyle is relevant when you have 50% of your strength or lower. That means there's even a window where some of the, those two skills, they don't apply at all from 50 to 70% strength. So um, all of the skills are relevant, but still no more than three at a time, and sometimes less than that. So this commander is cool, but... Not, in my opinion, a superstar. Let's get into it. First is city defense. Now, in the city defense category, we previously listed Constantine as an S+, assuming that their uh, cooldown is available for that super heal, and Charles Martel as an S-, minus, Song Ye and Richard I as S's. I actually think that for defending your city, this commander is really not very good. The first skill is quite, quite good. The second skill, however, has to do in part with movement speed, which is not compelling. The third and fourth skills have to do with having all cavalry, and that's not a situation you're going to have. The talents are not all that exciting for being in the city if you had them as a primary. I rate this commander actually as a C-, minus, the very worst legendary commander for defending a city. <laughs> so if they're not good at that, maybe they're good at barbarians and forts, and I would say that's actually somewhat true. The leaders for the Barbarians and Forts categories all are commanders that do extra damage to Barbarians. That's Minamoto and Cao Cao. I would rate this commander as a solid B. Uh, they've got extra movement speed for getting to combat, and they don't really care that their movement speed is lower when they're at combat, which is really quite nice. Um, I think they're good if you can create a situation where you have all cavalry and most rallies, you can create a situation where you have all cavalry, so I think they're fine for that. I'd rate them a little bit better than Julius Caesar, Frederick I, uh, a little bit better than uh, Mehmed, a little bit better than Saladin. Um, about on par with El Cid, frankly, for battling barbarians. The next category we need to get a look at is the open field, and in my opinion, that's what this commander was in many ways designed for, doing surgical-like damage to a single unit in the open field. Now, why is that? First of all, Cyclone of the Steps uh, creates a situation where you get to combat really, really quickly, and then once you're there, you're slowed profoundly. Your march speed is reduced by 30% when you're being attacked. So this commander is good at getting into the combat and really good at getting to a single target you need to destroy. I think that's great. I think that's really, really great. I also um, 
think that the single target damage is really, really exceptional. The double strike ability on the expertise skill is really, really good. So I think they're great in the open field. I would have rated them higher if they had AoE damage. I would have rated them higher if they didn't have the downside of having their march speed reduced when they're in combat. Um, and I ended up giving them an A+. I think they're slightly better than Yi Song Ye because they actually have ways to get to the combat reliably. Slightly better than Richard, again, because they can get to the combat. Slightly better than Barca and Mehmed and Constantine because he can get to the combat that he needs to get to. I mean, it's, I would really not underestimate how important that is, being able to move really quickly, and frankly, to avoid being engaged in the first place, if you see someone coming toward you, it's going to be very hard to catch Genghis Khan if he's not already in combat. So I gave him an A+, plus, and I feel pretty good about that. Um, it's actually uh, just, just short of... Uh, Charles Martel with the expertise skill, just short of Tao Tao, just short of El Cid. Worth mentioning that with this list, we're evaluating as if they have the expertise skill. Um, and if you want to see the full list, by the way, link's in the description. Okay, anyways, A+, plus, really, really solid. Um, I'm personally going to be investing them for the open field. Very happy with them in that capacity. Now, the next thing we need to get a look at is Rallying Cities, and this is really not a commander I would be using for that. If you had all cavalry, I think they're fine. I'd give them a B for that. If you don't have all cavalry, this commander really suffers profoundly. I would give them a C-. Do not, do not use this commander for rallying a city uh, unless you've got all cavalry, in which case I'm still going to look at you funny because why aren't you using Barca or Julius Caesar or Frederick or Mehmed or any of these other commanders that are really, really designed for that activity. Now, the next thing we need to get a look at is rallying and defending objectives. Now, objectives are different than cities. Garrison talents don't apply. Objectives include things like flags, holy sites, um, fortresses. This includes the structures in Ark of Osiris. I think what's interesting here is that you really need to have a full cavalry march going for this commander to be good. If you do, I actually would rate them at an A+, plus, equivalent to Mehmed or Constantine or El Cid or Saladin in that capacity. Um, and if you don't have full cavalry, which like, gosh, all someone has to do is dump in the wrong unit. Now you don't have full cavalry and, and the skills here are really worthless at that point. I'd give them a C plus in the situation where you don't have all cavalry. And I actually gave the same rating for defending structures as I did attacking structures, even though I guess the march speed on your way over to the structure is sort of relevant. Um, I love the huge amount of single target damage that you're getting from this skill and combined with the expertise skill. It is a lot of damage, uh, but I think that you know, Yi Song Ye, Richard I, Barca, Julius Caesar, Frederick are all slightly better on the ta attacking front, and Yi Song Ye and Richard slightly better on the defending front. So overall, this commander, in my opinion, is all about the open field. The talents are really good for that. I think versatility is a real womp womp. I don't know what it what you do with that with this commander. Um, but I think cavalry and skill tree are exceptional. And in the open field, you can do serious work with this commander. Build a rage engine with this guy because the first skill has a lower rage requirement and the second skill lowers that rage requirement even further. And you just want to be a damage output machine. All right, it's time for the overall rating. I would give... Khan, Genghis Khan, as an overall commander, as an overall commander, probably in the realm of an A minus, possibly even, I wouldn't go as low as B plus. This is one of the lowest rated legendaries on my list, but if you look at what he's good for, the open field combat. That is the thing that he does really, really well, better than most other commanders, and that's what I would be using him for. 
He's not versatile, but he's darn strong at that one thing. If you enjoyed this video, you should definitely like and subscribe. Check out the link in the description if you want to see the full chart along with all the tools that I create for people to use in Rise of Kingdoms. And until next time, my friends, you have fun. Smashing the Kingdom.